Good morning and welcome to our service of worship for this the second Sunday of Eastertide. I wonder how your week has been. As I've reflected on the scriptures and what's in the news, it's been really interesting to find some similarities. Disciples in lockdown, check. Disciples worried and fearful behind doors, check. Disciples confused and even doubting, what's going on? And then the risen Jesus, out of the tomb and out and about, being seen by hundreds of people who saw with their own eyes what resurrection looked like, that the promises were true. And especially this week, as we come to worship, we need to hold on to that faith, that hope, that belief. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And as I've had some quiet time this week in the garden, I've enjoyed seeing new shoots and leaves, rhododendrons ready in bud, the birds, the bees, and these little fellas down here, forget-me-nots. We might be in lockdown, but nature shows us that the signs that we are out of winter and darkness and that new life is coming. The message of Easter, right here to watch and be part of. And let's not remember, we are not forgotten. Our names are written on the palm of God's hands. So as we continue through these days and weeks, let us rejoice in our Easter hope and our risen Lord. And now over to Father William for our opening prayer. I want to invite you at this very moment to a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. And the way that he has chosen to speak to us is through the words of sacred scripture, which are his words to us, because it is his spirit that inspires every single word of our sacred scriptures. But we particularly encounter him in the gospel when Jesus speaks to us as a human being, as a fellow human being, during his public ministry, as he walked the length and breadth of Palestine on the shores of Lake Galilee and the hills and in the more mountainous area of Judea and in Jerusalem. But especially at this time, the Easter season, as we celebrate his resurrection, we have this personal encounter with Jesus as our risen Lord when he speaks his words to us as our risen Savior in those days following his resurrection. Peace be with you, he says on the very day of his resurrection, when he appears to his first disciples. And I want to give you some of his words that he spoke to us in his resurrection. Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. See by my hands and by my feet that it is I indeed. Doubt no longer, but believe. Come and have breakfast. Receive the Holy Spirit.
Do you love me? I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. So Jesus, our risen Lord and Saviour, we ask you to continue to speak to us your words, the words of life. Lord Jesus, fill us with your spirit to open our hearts to receive your life-giving words. Draw us to your words so that we can make our home in them every day of our lives and so that we may have a daily encounter with you, our risen Lord. And bring us to a daily personal encounter with you and to a deep personal knowledge of you as our Lord and God. Thank you, William. Well, last week when we celebrated Easter Day and the resurrection of Jesus and we, we saw Mary Magdalene go to the tomb uh, from John's Gospel and then she ran and she told Peter and, then, and John and they came running to the tomb and then they left and just left Mary Magdalene there and then she had that most amazing moment where she was the first person to see Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. And so, after that, obviously, Jesus then went to the disciples or to some of the disciples in that closed and locked room and, and, and wished them peace. He said, peace be with you. And so we pick up the story today from John's Gospel uh, as we continue to, to hear God's word to us today. So we hear from John 20, starting to read at verse 24. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And so let's hear now as Gary opens the word to us and God uses him to, to do that. So let's just pass over to Gary. Thank you for that, Alan. Friends, you find me here on the terrace at St John's on the back of the hub and I'm enjoying this lovely spring weather, the glorious sun shining down. Uh, spring is my favourite time of the year because it promises new birth, new growth, new energy. I also love spring because it also heralds in Easter. Easter for me is all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and again, new life, new birth, new energy. 
One of the traditions that we have in our own household on Easter Sunday, like many Christian households, is to watch an Easter film. I noticed that this year there was the usual on. We had the Ten Commandments with uh, Charlton Heston. We had the robe with Victor Mature, uh, which are fantastic. The story never changes, but some of the cinematographer uh, is a bit old now and a bit uh, outdated. So we looked for something new and we came across a film that we hadn't seen before entitled Risen. It stars Joseph Fiennes. He is a Roman tribune called Clavius and he's working for Pontius Pilate. The plot surrounds the fact that Pilate is approached by the chief priests who demand that they see the body of Jesus. They find the body of Jesus because he's left the tomb and there are rumours circulating that he is appearing all over Jerusalem speaking to his disciples. They want these rumours quashed. So Clavius goes in search of Jesus' body. Of course, he doesn't find it. What he does find is in an upper room. The disciples gathered together and in the midst of them is this man Jesus who Clavius himself saw being crucified. He doesn't understand, he can't interpret in his head what has gone on. How can this man who was dead be alive again? So the story continues that Clavius leaves behind his job as a Roman soldier and follows Jesus. He's not entirely sure why, but he just knows there must be more to life. And he has some questions. At one point, Jesus actually asks him, Clavius, what do you seek? And Clavius answers, a day without blood. At the end of the film, when Jesus is taken up into heaven, the disciples are dispersed to go around and on their ministry. And Clavius, we are told and we see, just disappearing into the distance. His life is forever changed. It is forever different. It will never be normal again. Friends, in this season, when we are, as a world, struck by coronavirus and COVID-19, we will never ever be the same again. We're going through a time of transition now. Loved ones cannot come to visit us. We cannot hold the people who we care for and who we need. People are losing their livelihoods, losing their homes. People are losing their lives. Will we ever get back to some form of normality again, whatever normal might be? The coarse Scottish comedian Frankie Boyle made this quote last week. He said, there is no normal for us to go back to. People sleeping in the streets isn't normal. Children living in poverty isn't normal. Using our tax paying money to bomb Yemen isn't normal. Using other people's lives to pile up objects isn't normal. The whole thing was absurd. Surely it's time to start imagining something better. I think in this season of Easter, we can imagine something better. We should be imagining something better, something that we can build upon, something that we can encourage others to be part of. The country clapping on a Thursday night at 8 p.m. for the NHS and all the support workers around the world is about unification, about us all coming together, imagining a world that can be better. When Jesus appeared to Doubting Thomas that day in the upper room, it was as if all the blindness from Thomas had been lifted. He was able to put his fingers in the side of Jesus, see the wounds in his hands. And Jesus says, Thomas, doubt no longer, but believe. Friends, we should doubt no longer, but we should believe. We should believe that there is a new alternative to our old lives. Believe that there is a new way. Let us, after the lockdown, prepare to play our part as Christians in building a better and a newer life in which the message of Jesus, like the spring sun, comes shining down. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I send my love to you, my best wishes. Go well, stay well. Amen.
Thank you, Gary, for that wonderful message. Shall we pray? God, we come to you now in the beauty of this world. We give you thanks for the sunshine. But in the midst of it all, we know that there are those who are suffering and we pray that you may be with them, that you may strengthen them and uplift them, that you may comfort those who are grieving, that you may uplift our doctors, our nurses, our carers and all our key workers in this time. Fill them with your spirit. Pour your energy and strength upon them and give them the wisdom that they need. We think too, Lord, of our future and we thank you for the hope of the Easter message. And so as we continue to take steps forward, we pray for your rebirth, your renewal, Help us to build the world that you wish it to be rather than the world that it is. Help us to bring goodness, love and grace into it. May you speak into each of our hearts this day and every day. In the name of Jesus, amen. And so as we go forth from here, and whatever the week may bring us, we come with the words that Jesus spoke today. Peace be with you. Shalom. <laughs>